and multiple antigens. Research priority number two, set up epidemiological studies to evaluate whether the artificial suppression of viral and bacterial diseases by mass vaccination is in conjunction with the overuse of antibiotics and exposure to environmental toxins preventing the human immune system from being naturally challenged and strengthened by childhood in childhood as it was in the past generations by infectious diseases, leading today's highly vaccinated populations more vulnerable to new and more virulent viruses and bacteria. Research priority number three, conduct studies to investigate the possible link between vaccination, learning disabilities, and attention de deficit disorder. Research priority number five, conduct studies to investigate the possible uh, link between vaccines and autism. Research priority number five, set up studies which will, on a continuing long-term basis, uh, scientifically reevaluate each of the 10 vaccines. 10 vaccines, it's 16 vaccines now. 10 vaccines currently being given to children, including full evaluation of the safety of growth mediums, adjuvants, preservatives, and other additives, as well as identification of genetic and other high-risk factors in order to screen out high-risk children. And then I told them, quote, it is unfair to leave the funding of cutting-edge vaccine safety research to the families of vaccine victims. When many millions of dollars are being spent by HHS to develop and promote new vaccines and uh, little money, it's hard to read this, uh, has been uh, allocated or made available to study vaccine hours events. It even more, it's even more disturbing to parents to watch independent medical researchers who are trying to pursue vaccine hours event research to be denied HHS funding and be forced to risk their careers because they are conducting what is sadly stigmatized as a politically incorrect line of research. I said in closing, quote, I became an investigator 14 years ago because Sorry, I was driven by my love here. for my so child. Sucks. Today, other like young it. mothers and fathers in America and in countries around the world are being driven by the same love for their children to conduct research after their children's lives have been forever changed by vaccines they were required by law to use. And increasingly, parents of healthy children are following the same path because they don't want their children to become vaccine research statistics. And I warned them, I think you will be surprised at the depth of knowledge that the smart young parents coming on the scene today have in the areas of immunology, epidemiology, and even molecular biology. Oh some of them are, are with writing books, some are joining with independent researchers and funding vaccine research, some are becoming vocal consumer advocates, and others will make their impact on Capitol Hill. They will be the ones to help take the vaccine safety issue into the 21st century. Will you be ready for them? This weekend, that question I asked two decades ago at the Institute of Medicine is being answered with a resounding no. Clearly, public health officials at the CDC underestimated the baby boomer mothers, like me, who figured out that parents were not being told the truth about vaccine risks and failures, and they have also underestimated the young parents today who that who know that they're not being jumped on the truth, who are mad as hell, yeah. and are not going to take it anymore. Woo! That's right.
Professional Relations, who is our liaison with the chiropractic community. We are proud to stand in solidarity with everyone in this room who came to this march and is attending the rally tomorrow in Grant Park, coming together on this human and civil rights issue. And lastly, I want uh, to say, I think it's important to acknowledge that Michelle Ford took a personal financial risk when she signed contracts on behalf of Vile to pay for the costs associated with tomorrow's rally for everything from sanitation and security to the stage and audio equipment. It was a leap of faith and even though the GoFundMe, GoFundMe page has raised over $10,000, there is still a $25,000 shortfall. And I hope that everyone will consider making another donation to Vile and ask your friends and, and your colleagues if they believe in this mission to do the same. So Michelle will be able to break even and she will not have to personally bear the cost of sponsoring this amazing event which has brought together people from many different states who are come from diverse backgrounds who all share a love for our children.